Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Life After 3D. Now, for those who are unaware, I'll give you the very short version. Um, I've had to give up um, being a professional 3D model and 3D artist due to permanent nerve damage in both hands, primarily my right, I'm right-handed. Um, while I could keep on going for a while, the quality would dip and eventually I'd use use of my hands. Right? So that's the purpose of this series. Um, first off, I've decided to have a little bit of a change in location from my usual videos, which are all done downstairs, um, and go into the back bedroom where I sometimes do some of the guitar and recording stuff because I've got my big amp down there, you know, or one of the big amps and stuff like that. So I don't know what the sound's going to be like. I'm using my Zoom uh, H4N there for the sound. And I've also got sound coming from the GX7. So I don't know what the sound's going to be like. Hopefully it'll be all right and not too echoey. Because I don't have any acoustic isolation here. I might have to add that if I use it properly in here. So um, this will be an occasional series. What happens when a professional 3D artist can no longer be a 3D artist? And they have virtually no other useful skills. I don't currently have an answer, but it's going to be a very interesting journey. So let me um, just outline where things are going to go. Now, while there's plenty of things I can do, most of them use my hands. Now, ironically, as I've said in my last video, uh, the one thing that's not affected is my music. I was a musician long before I was an artist. I've been playing instruments since the age of six. So 44 years, right? Um, music doesn't make any money. It's a giant money pit that you throw money into. You know, if you can see behind this camera, the amount of musical equipment that is all against that wall. And just about every room in the house, you'd understand that, right? That's not an option. Yes, I used to do programming. I haven't done that since 2014. Uh, to say that I'm rusty is an underestimation. So I don't really have a lot of stuff that could be said to be transferable skills apart from Yes, I've run departments of up to 600 people. Uh, I know how to do that. There's a lot of knowledge still in this brain. Now, what sort of plans have I got going forward for the future? Right now, um, I finished my last gig on Friday, uh, Friday night. Now, my daughter's off for half-term holiday at the moment, so I'm not doing anything right now until the Monday after you see this video, at the very soonest. My plans, such as they are right now, before I've had a chance to think about them, one, set up a passive income. This could take a year before I see any money coming back whatsoever. Uh, that's a conservative estimate. That's if it works at all. The idea for that is to have an income that will keep on rolling in and hopefully increasing in its amount as I get older and I have to do less and less, right? Now, I've got some pie-in-the-sky ideas. One thing I've always wanted to do um, is a full 3D art course from a person knowing nothing, literally zilch, don't even know how to install the software, to becoming a competent professional artist. That would take a long time to produce, and I think I'll be looking at a, a few years to do it in a series of episodes. I don't even know if that's going to sell. I really don't. It's a lot of time. But again, I can do some 3D... Um, you know, as a hobby, I've just got to be very careful. I only do about two to three hours a day as a max, I was a day maximum with before this starts going. Um, so I'm trying to be very careful. Though I could do certainly, obviously, three some sort of 3D training. I'm still teaching, you know, as a visiting lecturer, of, you know, at the moment, once a week. Um, hopefully, those hours may, might increase when we hit September. We don't know. Um, so a lot of it as well, there's things I want to do to try and make sure that other people have a better time of it and don't get to the st state I'm in now. Because trust me, I am not the only person who's had to give up 3D because of problems. You know, um, I'm just a, a walking sort of example of what happens if you do all the hours and then work through carpal tunnel for 17 years and ignore it. This is what happens. But also... There's an issue um, which I'm trying to put under the heading of activism. There's a lot of um, applications out there that they're great, but often 
if you have to do the same job time and time again, which in production you could have to do, especially in games, you know, let's say you've got, I can't exactly mention certain things because it'll be very obvious what I'm talking about, but let's assume you have um, 10,000 of the same asset that needs the same thing done to it. And it's something very simple, like, say, a plane of projection, you know, onto vertex cores. Now, you'll have that down to a hotkey, a few hotkeys, and you'll be racing through it. The trouble is, highly repetitive tasks like I'm doing there with this hand, all day, every day, really bad for this. The same as um, when you're sculpting. A lot of it is down to tiny little micro-movements, slow micro-movements, incredibly bad for the joints. So part of it is, what is possible? Is it possible to open up a line of dialogue with the likes of Autodesk, with Maxon, with a lot of the other big companies and say, look, this is a problem you don't realise you have yet. This is still a very young industry. It's in everybody's best interests if artists have as long a career as possible. Okay? I don't know whether anybody's going to listen. After 27 years, you'd like to think that maybe, just maybe, they'll be prepared to have a conversation with me at the very least. But pff, one thing I've learned in this industry is uh, the phrase, well, you think, doesn't often come into it. But we'll see. So um, one of the things that I'm going to have the most problems with is going to be in my everyday life, outside of all this stuff. When I'm in the house, I'm always sat in front of the computer. I'm ever working or doing something else in front of a computer. Now that, it's, you know, that's not going to help either. So I'm going to find other things to do that aren't in front of a computer. I haven't sat on the sofa for more than 10 minutes for over four years. That's what I'm on about. Um, so I need to re-examine my life, uh, how I'm approaching things, what I can do that doesn't involve me sitting in front of two bloody monitors all the time. Right? There's also some other things that are going to happen. I was talking to a rather perceptive young man who was a friend of mine last night because I was playing, me and Gypsy Dave were playing, we'd have a, a gig every Monday at the Turf and one on Sunday at the Red House and Chapel. But then a young lad I was talking away after we finished and he came up with something very insightful. He said, you know where the, the danger period is, where? I said, what? He said, well, the thing is, you all see it's going to take up a year to have, you know, to have any sort of decent income coming back in again. So what happens when your flat broke and a client or an ex-client comes to you and goes, yeah, but we'll give you X amount of money if you do this job? knowing what will do your hands. And he's got a very, very good point. That's the temptation. When you have the skills to do a thing and know that it's, one of a better word, an easy payday. It might be long hours, but it's an easy payday. Uh, it's very tempting to go, you know what, I'll just do an extra few weeks. I'll, uh, I'll be fine. But that's not how it works. I'll learn on the last one, the uh, last freelance gig I did, that towards the end, this was playing a lot more simply because my brain went, this is your last ever freelance gig, make sure you're doing as many hours as possible and getting paid as much as you can, because we don't know when we're getting paid again. So he makes a very good point. This is something that I have to take on board. Now, I know that some people have said that they expect this to be like the Rolling Stones farewell tour, and then another farewell tour next year. It can't be. If it does that, then I have failed, because then these are going to be fucked. That's it. I'm, I'm screwed, right? Just about everything you do in your life involves your hands. Whether it's scratching your face, scratching your ass, making the tea, you know, picking up a paint glass. Everything involves your hands, right? So I cannot afford to be drawn into being sucked back into the industry. So what do I do? You know, part of me saying, do I start with a Patreon thing or a GoFundMe? I'm, I'm open to ideas if anybody thinks that's actually worth bloody doing. Or that I'm just going to be sit looking at something that says one cent. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but I think the, one of the things that's going to be the hardest for me, because it is a very hard decision. I've had a few days to get my head around it, and it affected me a lot deeper than I thought it would. I thought, okay, we've got head on this. We know, yeah, the last three months gig ran a couple of weeks longer than I thought it would, which is sort of like a slow death, because I knew it was the end. Right? And you always want to go on a bang, not a whimper. Um, and it's just 
it hit me quite hard. Uh, 27 years of my life, more than half my life, this is what I've done. But I've had similar things happen in the past. Uh, this may, Some of you might already know this, some of you won't. Uh, back when I was in my early teens, I worked as an escape artist. I worked all over the world, um, made a hell of a lot of money, uh, then was diagnosed, you'll see the parallels here, I was diagnosed as having a double bend and a twist in my spine, scoliosis, so every time I was dangling off a crane in a straight jacket, I could have ended up in a fucking wheelchair. So I had to stop that, which again was something I really loved doing, and I was really fucking good at it. In fact, I still hold one of the world records. People try to break it, and they never have. Um, I don't know. We'll see if somebody does somewhere. You know, it'd be nice to see somebody better the time. Um, so I was left after that with nothing, no real purpose. And to be fair, I bummed around for quite a lot of years doing the grand total of fuck all until I started doing 3D. Um, so I've, this has happened to me before. I know I can come out the other side of this into something else. Now, the thing is, I was on the conversation with my wife this morning, and so the thing is, yeah, it's all right having a passive income, but I need to do something else. A lot of you know I suffer from clinical depression, have done, pff, this year since my late teens, but let's assume most of my life, right, all my life. Now, I need to keep this busy, because if I don't, I've learned it will find its own amusement. And guess what? That's not fun for anybody. So I've got to find something to do. But going back into education from the other side, as in actually having to fucking learn things, as opposed to teach people, that would be very hard for me. It's something I've not done in that organised format since I left school. So we'll see. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is just the first video in probably many. Um, I'm trying to make this not like the old Wayne casts that some of you will remember. So I won't be putting up a version of Wayne, right? Um, not a characterization. It's just, this is, basically, this, we're going to see what happens. When you're forced to give up a job in 3D, what happens? What are the possible ways out? Now, although I have a, a number of plans for passive income, I'm not going to say what they are for two reasons. One, they're going to take a while. There's no magic button here. Two, I don't want anybody to beat me to it and then make a fortune and me still be sitting with fucking nothing. So I will tell you about these things as I'm going along, but after they've got to certain stages. There's going to be a lot of scattergun approach, a lot of, you know, throwing shit at a wall and see what sticks. And that's what I'm going to be doing for a while. Um, so I might have to do some fairly heavy hours, but a lot of it's going to be planning. Because I've got to make sure that every time I'm having to use the computer for any more than a couple of hours with these hands, that those are effective hours that are achieving something. Not just me fucking around watching YouTube videos, you know. So this is sort of important. Where do I go from now? If it happens to you later on in your career, how do you get from where I'm at this moment to wherever the hell I'm going to end up? I don't know. It'll be fun looking back on these years from now when I'm old and grey to see um, the start of this journey. I don't know where it's going. I don't even know if the journey is going to stop after six months. We don't know. I get it up in a cardboard box again. I've been homeless once. Wouldn't be the fucking first time. Um, hopefully it doesn't get to that level. But so anybody out there that feels like, you know, you know, Wayne's got a brain on him. He's got 27 years of experience that might, you know, prove useful. Yes. Yes, I do. I've got a lot of knowledge and experience in my head which I know is useful to somebody, it's simply finding them. But, again, it's like, well, there's some things I can still do in 3D. These are things anybody can do. So why would they pay the extra premium to have me come in when they can have somebody who's straight out of uni? It's not hard, you know, some of the stuff I'm on about. Like, the stuff that I'm really skilled at are the things that I cannot do anymore. That's why I've had to give it up. So... I will probably have problems with my depression. I've, I've been very open with this well, on my Facebook account that there will be plenty of ups and downs because this is going to be a rocky road. I think until at the soonest, it might start easy around October, November. Um, that's if everything works out according to the plan. Uh, it's going to get rocky. It's going to, you know, as I say, there'll be ups and downs, twists in the road. Unexpected things will happen. What was it? Unexpected the unexpected. 
Um, and I've learned in my life that sometimes things come from the most unexpected of places when you least expect them. I never expected to be a 3D artist. It was only ever to prove a point to my brother that somebody, you know, I declared one night when he was over, oh, this 3D modeling lot, this looks fucking easy. I'll have this done, learn this in a week. And here we are 27 years later. So I find that quite ironic because today is my brother's 47th birthday. So I know he, may, he won't watch this today, but he'll say it another day. And he will remember that conversation very well. That I, It was purely by accident that I ended up finding I was good at this. So I'll see you in the next episode. I've got no idea, as I say, what the hell is going to be in each episode, whether I'm going to stay in this room, because I've got a nasty feeling it's going to sound a bit echoey. Uh, we'll have to see, right? But it's a journey, and we'll see where the hell it leads. And I'll see you next time in the next episode of Life After 3D. Bye-bye.